Thank you, Chair, distinguished audience, colleagues and friends. Um, I will use this uh, project where we froze in our research vessel as an example uh, and make some conclusions at the end of my talk uh, on how we can strengthen international collaboration. Uh, as already said by the State Secretary, the project was inspired by Fritjof Nansen that drifted over the Arctic Ocean with FRAM. Um, I'm tempted to say after two, two, this morning's uh, very excellent presentation from the United States, and it was not crushed by the ice at that time. <laughs> but also very much inspired by IPY. Uh, IPY was truly an inter international effort with big projects uh, that could not be done by one nation alone. And the fundamental lack of data in the Arctic, especially in winter, uh, made us uh, pull together resources to, to make this project happen. We all know about the rapid change in the Arctic. Uh, we also know that the climate models have not done a good job reproducing, capturing the changes that has happened in the Arctic. We know that the sea ice area has shrunk with about 40% since 1980 and 40% also uh, uh, um, less thickness uh, combined, maybe three quarter or even more loss of sea ice volume. So there is a changing Arctic we have at hand and that is also why it's so important to study the Arctic in these changing times. So, the Norwegian Young Sea Ice Cruise, NICE, um, gave us this opportunity uh, to study an area at the time of the year that has relatively seldom been studied. Uh, should keep in mind that Soviet and Russia later have had an extensive winter program in the Arctic Ocean through the drifting ice stations. That's been really a contribution to under our understanding of the Arctic uh, and also the more recent French Tara expedition are examples of such kind of research. The science is basically, and you will hear more about that in the breakout session, um, collecting as much data you can uh, from satellites, from aircrafts. We had a collaboration with NASA, overflight by a C-130, also from the British Antarctic Survey with their twin author, uh, and then we used drones. We sampled extensively on the ice at the surface, studying the atmosphere, sea, ice, ocean interaction, which is very important for energy balance and also mass balance, and then into the water mass, of course. Um, as said, a truly international effort, 15 institutions from 10 different countries, in addition to six Norwegian institutions. Um, sea ice, make a stop there. We often think of sea ice uh, as the sea ice, the ice only, but the big question mark and what has not been really modeled good enough in, in the climate models is the impact of the snow on top of the sea ice. So that was a significant part of our program. You could argue there will be less snow on the sea ice in the future due to a later freeze up of sea ice, or you could argue that maybe there will be more snow because of a warming Arctic will produce more precipitation as snow. Snow is extremely important for the whole mass and energy balance because it so, has such uh, uh, insulating characters when it's on top of, of the sea ice. So the moles need to capture both changes in snow and sea ice. Uh, daily balloon soundings, part of our program. Here we see a CTD measuring the ocean characteristics seen from below, so we are viewing this up towards the underside of the sea ice. Uh, we had divers uh, on this expedition, especially to study the ecosystem, um, and especially in spring when the ecosystem wakes up after a long dark night, as we saw in the video. Not very much reminds us about climate change in this video. This was January, dark, windy, cold. However, um, we know we have changes in the Arctic and, and, uh, and we, we, ca we measured um, the ecosystem changes uh, and the blooming in the spring. We heard a lot on this conference about teleconnections and this is a prime focus of this project to collect data that can improve the parameterization of climate models that can again improve our projections for not only regional but also global climate. 
um, it's important to send out a message um, to the rest of the world and to the public. And by having large international projects like this and that we had also during IPY, it's easier to reach out. Uh, that is also a lesson learned that we made. Oops. Um, we attracted BBC, for example, and National Geographic will have an issue in January next year uh, dedicated to Arctic and climate, where this project also will be uh, covered. And we had dignitaries, politicians, and here we see the Crown Prince and Crown Princess of Norway visiting our project and our measuring site. So what about the future? Uh, I think it's... Uh, from my point of view, very clear that we need more information, more knowledge, more data, more observing systems and monitoring from the Arctic, also emphasized by Fran Ulmer earlier today. Uh, and um, the, the way we investigated the Arctic in the past during winter uh, is maybe not tomorrow's solution because the ice gets thinner, it drifts faster, and even though Russia is still going on with their drifting ice stations, maybe the future will call for a ship or similar that can be available drifting in the Arctic Ocean. And one intriguing idea, uh, if we don't look at the costs and all the problems, uh, maybe the scientific world and the world would benefit from having a platform permanently in the Arctic Ocean uh, and a, as a truly international infrastructure that we could share and use uh, common. Uh, we have the South Pole Station in Antarctica, so the, the, we are having a, a, a location at the South Pole. Maybe we should also have one in the North Pole. At last, I will move on shore for a moment. Um, throughout the Arctic, we have research stations. Uh, many of them have very strong international programs. Uh, we still strive to make this a pan-Arctic, truly integrated system. We are working on that as a scientific community through a program called SEON. It's not easy. There are lots of challenges, but we are moving in the di right direction. Um, meanwhile, we have taken an initiative in Svalbard um, and invited from the Norwegian side our good colleagues and partners from different nations to establish something we call the Svalbard Integrated Earth Observing System. This is about sharing data, it's about uh, sharing resources, human resources, it's about sharing infrastructure, uh, and the heart of the whole system is something we call a knowledge center, where all the information, all the knowledge is gathered in one center, and the information is transformed also to an extent that it can be useful for, for example, Arctic Council or IPCC, so it can have a a policy shaping also dimension to it. Um, we strived in the global climate negotiations for many years to find the one solution that could solve all our issues and we, we, we had a Kyoto protocol that was not so effective. Um, maybe there is a similar parallel in the Arctic that we have to do like the climate community did, break down our efforts to reach our common high standard goal into smaller pieces and regional approaches like this may be helpful uh, and the sum of them may, might at the end of the day actually gives us, uh, give us a, a, a good pan-Arctic observing and monitoring uh, network and, and program. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>